welcome answer. We're starting. So today you're going to be taking a trip on a train. Aujourd'hui, vous allez prendre le train um, et vous allez apprendre un petit peu de vocabulaire et puis après, pour demander les choses, les directions et quelque chose. Je pense que ça peut être une leçon très utile, soit pour le vacances, soit pour le business ou le travail. Donc, on y va. Let's go! Un train, un train, a train, a train, and take the time to really focus on my mouth, a train, a train. Voie ferrier, train tracks, train tracks, train tracks. Le conducteur du train, train conductor train conductor and I think he's getting taken the train to Dinette. How wonderful! And you will also need a billet de train, a train ticket. Celui-là c'est pour la France mais plus tard on va avoir un pour l'Angleterre. This one is for France bien sûr, uh, Eurostar, billet de réservation, and it's called a train ticket. Now, this is really interesting because en France on dit le TGV, TGV, but if I say the TGV, or if English people say I want to get a ticket for the TGV, lots of times French people are like, huh? And it's quite similar really, TGV, TGV. TGV, 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 TGV. That could be a tongue twister. <laughs> okay, let's go. Le quai, le quai. The platform, the platform. I will always say, Votre train départ du quai numéro 4. Your train will leave from platform number Four, for example. So the platform, knowing what the platform is in English is very important so you take the right train. Maybe you need to buy a, a map. Donc peut-être vous avez besoin d'acheter la carte ou une carte pour regarder un petit peu où vous allez. Donc peut-être c'est Paris, peut-être c'est Londres. Where are you going? Maybe a map could be very, very useful. Allez, on y va, à la gare, at the station. Let's go. This is a typical British English train ticket. It's always this ghastly orange and green, an English train ticket, and billet de train anglais. Now, whether you get this from a conductor or a ogishi or from um, a, a machine in the wall, donc un, un guichet automatique en fait pour acheter les billets, c'est toujours le même billet. It's always the same ticket, okay? Um, and it tells you lots of information. Now, let's just see how you would ask if you didn't have un guichet, si, 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 um, si, si il n'y en a pas uh, un guichet um, automatique, donc il faut demander à le conducteur quelqu'un, uh, je, je voudrais acheter un, un billet, donc uh, je peux acheter un billet comment? Donc c'est simple, peut-être uh, il faut demander pour poser la question. Un allée simple orange, s'il vous plaît, deuxième classe. Um, a single for orange, please, second class. So a single, this would be a single ticket. A single ticket for orange, please, second class. Now, in England, um, it's, it is normal to, to say whether you want first class or second class because lots of businessmen and business ladies travel first class and entrepreneurs, a lot of them travel first class, so always make sure that you say second class. They will normally ask you, 
but maybe you want to leave your luggage. Donc, je voudrais laisser mes bagages quelque part. I would like to leave my baggage somewhere. And normally one would say to you, go to the locker area. Allez à la consigne, go to the locker area. Or go to the baggage area. But it's normally locker area. Or they might say secure area. So they might also say secure area. And as we know, we are always j'ai faim. J'ai faim. I'm hungry. I know in France there's always lots of beautiful things to eat. J'ai faim. I'm hungry. Au buffet, monsieur, c'est là-bas. A gauche. So this would be the conductor saying, the buffet car, sir, it's over there. Now this is something I want to point out, the monsieur and sir. In France, donc en France, c'est très normal pour toujours dire un monsieur ou madame à la fin de chaque petite euh, question ou si vous posez une question ou si vous répondez à quelqu'un. C'est normal, en fait, euh, C'est-à-dire, c'est de la politesse en France pour dire monsieur ou madame. Mais en anglais, on ne dit pas sir ou madame, sauf que c'est quelqu'un très important euh, ou euh, vous savez que c'est normal. Normalement, juste pour le jeune, comme normal, comme, euh, comme, comme toi et moi en fait, on dit, ne on dit pas madame ou sir. Okay, so you don't always say, you don't really say uh, sir and uh, madame um, or your lady um, to normal people. That's only to really important people, maybe royal family or politicians, people very important. Okay, so the buffet car, sir, it's over there. It's over there. And notice, uh, notice how it's over there is uh, spelt. I'm just going to move that down. This is there and it's not, it's not this type of there, okay? This there is normally used for a possession. It's, uh, it's, it's their lipsticks. It's their phone. Okay, but when you're giving directions, it's only this. It's over there. The buffet car, sir, it's over there. Je voudrais me reposer. Voyager, c'est très fatigant. Je voudrais me reposer. Voyager, c'est très fatigant. I would like to rest. Traveling is very tiring. So this is what we kind of call a bit of a rhetorical question. You haven't actually said, I would like to rest or where can I rest? You stated, I would like to rest, traveling is very tiring. So you're expecting someone to give you an answer and normally they do. So, allô madame, allez à la salle d'attente. La salle d'attente. Of course, you can do that in the waiting room. So, um, the waiting room is exactly the same type of, uh, type of room, type of service in England as it is in France and different other places in um, Europe. Now, sometimes we need to go to the toilet when we're traveling. So, it's always good to be able to ask a, Où sont les toilettes? Où sont les toilettes, s'il vous plaît? Ou oh, s'il vous plaît, où sont les toilettes? Uh, where are the toilets, please? Or, yeah, where are the toilets, please? Don't do inversion by saying, please, where are the toilets? You could say that in French, s'il vous plaît, pour drawing attention, s'il vous plaît, où sont les toilettes? But the word order in English is not the same. So if you say, please, where are the toilets? That's 
kind of weird, it's a bit odd. You would say, where are the toilets please? Or where can I find the toilets please? Let's add this in. Where can I find the toilets please? Where can I find the toilets please? This is a typical way of asking for things. Where can I find the toilets please? Okay. Le toilette sont là, madame. Le toilette sont là, madame. La bas au fond. La bas au fond. So, the toilets are over there. There at the end. And again, notice here it's there as in given a direction. It's non possessive. The toilets are over there. There at the end. Okay, so there we go. That was a very quick little lesson. I hope that's really useful for you. Play it back as many times as you like to really understand the differences between the languages. I thought it would be really useful to see them laid out like this, the English and the French. Now, we don't always do direct translations. I learned this very much when I was learning French. The French language is built up of lots of little phrases. If I was to, to, to do a direct translation from French to English or from English to French, it sounds wrong. And some of that is because of the word order. For example, in French, you would say uh, la voiture bleu, la voiture bleu. But in English, if I was to if I was to do a direct translation of that, that would be the car blue. And English people would be scratching their head, thinking, why has he put that the wrong way round? It's back to front because we always put the adjective before the noun. So in English, it's not this, it's this. It's the blue car, okay? So uh, I should write that down for you, actually. In comparison to the French language, in English, the adjective most of the time comes before the noun. Okay, so blue, we're describing the noun, which is the car, um, but in French, uh, bleu is après. Donc, c'est important quand on va, en, quand on fait le conjugation, euh, euh, il faut, en anglais, en anglais nous, euh, on met le adjectif, donc le mot qui, qui décrit le objet avant le objet, mais en français, on met le adjectif après le objet. Ça, c'est très important parce que si vous essayez de faire une traduction directe comme ça, vous allez trouver euh, que vous êtes un petit peu, euh, on va tout, tout est un peu mélangé et euh, pas bien. <rire> et les gens vont penser, hmm, <rire> pourquoi elle dit ça comme ça? C'est un petit peu derrière, avant, derrière, avant. Et ça, c'est pas bien. Surtout si vous voudrez parler le français euh, pour les business euh, et d'être professionnel, quoi. Voilà, donc euh, j'espère que c'est utile. Merci beaucoup. N'oubliez pas de souscrire à euh, mon YouTube. Don't forget to, sus to subscribe. Blablabla. Franglais, bouche franglais. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Also, follow us over on Facebook. And don't forget to register on the website, englyteach.com. I will leave a link below. And like that, you can get lots of free resources, join in the seminars, and you can even book private classes with me. Voilà. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir. Et à la prochaine.